episode 70. Let the good times roll. This is the One Extraordinary Marriage Podcast, home of the Seven Days of Sex Challenge, featuring your hosts, the authors of the groundbreaking new book, Stripped Down, Tony and Elisa DiLorenzo. Welcome back to One Extraordinary Marriage, where we talk about life, love, and the pursuit of intimacy. You're here with Elisa DiLorenzo. And Tony DiLorenzo. And happy Easter, belated Easter. To all of you. To all of you. Yep. It's a Monday morning for us. This is a, a rare occasion. Elisa and I usually, if we have a little time in the morning, we're usually having sex. But uh, since Easter was last night, we didn't get home late from our festivities. We're podcasting for you guys and for us. Well, on that, and we also, I also have something going on tonight. So to get the podcast in, yes, we need to just be mindful of our time. Yep. And so here we are. Happy Monday morning to all of you. Um, it'll be Tuesday when you're re- listening mm-hmm. to this, but know that we're excited because it's Monday and we're here with you. Yeah. And um, like the intro says, home of the seven days of sex challenge. It's coming up. So May 8th through 14th, 2011, the second annual. We already have... I think about 10 couples already signed up. Woo-hoo. So, and just like last year, we had around 130 couples, but the majority of those came in the last like four days. So we're not sweating it. We want to hit 200 couples if we can. If you're on board, get on over to the uh, oneextraordinarymarriage.com and click on the link below, which will tell you where to go. I forget. I even forget what it's called. <laughs> Here we go again. That's what it is. One extraordinary marriage.com backslash. Here we go again. Something, something, something. We'll make sure the links in the show notes. Yeah. Yes. We'll just do that. Okay. We'll, we'll make it easy for you. So don't, don't have to worry about writing down all that backslash. And yeah. What did you say? Here we go again. Um, we're excited. We're excited. It's less than two weeks away. And you know, we're starting to see messages from couples that are like, Ooh, you know, we're getting excited. We want to do this too. We want to come on board with you. Um, Actually, I saw a message on our Facebook fan page this morning from somebody who uh, husband's out of town the 8th through the 11th. And so she's like, maybe we should just start later. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Just because we're doing it from the 8th to the 13th, 14th, 14th. yeah, figure we're doubling up on a day there or something. I don't know. 8th to the 14th. Um, If those dates don't work for you, Mm -hmm. figure out seven days that do. Yeah. And the cool thing is each and every day that we do the seven days of sex challenge, we will have a post. Mm-hmm. So you can just follow along with us afterwards. It's it's not like you're missing out, you know. Yes, you're missing out a little bit in the group dynamic that's going to be happening, but all the information is there. We love to put up new things that you can do each day mm-hmm. or we talk to you or this year we're hoping to do more videos. Elisa and I need to get up off our butts and make those videos for you so that you can watch them every day. But that's what it's about. It's about just taking some time out of our schedules Mm -hmm. and making it a priority. And so be it, you do it the eighth through the 14th or you do it a couple days after we start, or you do it. Maybe you're listening to this two, three months after this has even happened. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you can't go back and do it with your spouse. Absolutely. I mean, the most important thing is to make the decision to do it. Right. when, When you make the decision and you're decisive in your marriage about making intimacy a priority, that's, that decision right there starts to create change. Yep. And so if you're digging it, please share it Mm -hmm. on with your friends and family and everybody, you know, via Facebook, Twitter and all your other social media networks, that would be so appreciated because the lives and the marriages that are touched by it are absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. So, and on that note, I just want to ask all of you, if you can, please go into iTunes click on podcast, go to the iTunes store, p- click on podcast, pick up one extraordinary marriage. Please review us and rate us. Last time I checked this weekend, we are number seven when you type in marriage. And that is unbelievable. Um, I was floored and shocked. And the reason it came up is because I got a Twitter message from Todd. And you know, the first thing that his message said was, Hey, great job. Just wanted to say thank you for your book. Downloaded audiobook, Can't stop listening. I, I responded back just saying, Hey, that's cool. How'd you hear about us? 
And he said, looking for a podcast on iTunes on marriage. Listen to two episodes, was hooked, found website, found book, rest is history. And you don't understand, folks, that when you leave a review and you leave a rating, that is telling the world, others that are looking to enhance their marriage, to increase the passion, the romance, that we're a resource. Mm -hmm. And you allow us to impact marriages just like we are with Todd right here. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're we're just privileged to be able to speak to you and to many others. But if you can please leave your reviews, leave your ratings because that's the way we're going to continue to impact many more marriages around the world. You know, they say that you know, one person can make a difference. And if you haven't checked out our reviews on iTunes lately, um, they are very humbling for us when we read our, I mean, we don't, it's not like we're clicking on every day to see, you know, how many reviews or what people have said, but periodically we go in and listen, you know, or read what you all have to say. And your words spoken to us in that way are incredibly powerful. And like Tony said, we have the privilege of being on these mics with you guys, you know, once a week, but your words there literally have the impact to change marriages around the world. Mm -hmm. Um, Because when people are coming to iTunes and, you know, their marriage might be in crisis, their marriage might be great. And they're just like, oh, what else is out there? And when they read what you've written about how our podcast and this one community of which you are a part of has changed lives, that plugs another husband and wife into the one community. It spreads this message you guys already know we're internationally. And if you don't, we have listeners in South Africa and Australia and Canada and Holland and all across the U S and probably more countries uh, that we don't even know about yet. And Mm -hmm. if you're one of those listeners in another country that I haven't messed it, I haven't mentioned, we would love to know where you're listening to us. um, Because it's, it's literally awesome. And how you all have grown this community. Because it's like Tony said, when you share us on Facebook and Twitter and send an email to your friends about, you know, oh my gosh, they're doing this crazy sex challenge. You know, you guys, you know, get on board. Let's do this. You know, let's have couples all over the world putting their marriage first for one week. What would be the impact of that? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine I mean, last year we had 130 couples Mm -hmm. put their marriage first for one week and lives were changed. If you go, if you go back and read some of those, um, daily posts and comments from last year, especially as you get towards the end of the week, when couples have done this four, five, six, seven days and you hear their story on day seven, Mm -hmm. some of them are to the point where they'll bring tears to your eyes. Some of them, many of them did. I, I can recall Last year, just uh, reading a number of those comments and just tears streaming down my face. You know, marriage so often takes a back seat in our society because, you know, whether it's the kids or work or, you know, all of these other things that compete for attention, this relationship, which is the foundation of our families, often gets overlooked. Right. And so we pick this one week to say, you know what, for one week, we're going to say this is the most important earthly relationship that we have. Work's not going to interfere with our seven days of sex challenge. Kids are not going to interfere with our seven days of sex challenge. Church obligations are not going to interfere with this. All of the stuff out there, guess what? My spouse comes first. And the the hope and desire is that that has a paradigm shift for you to really start looking at your marriage more and more through the highs and the lows. And that leads us to this week's topic of enjoying the highs. Yeah. Enjoying those moments when you're, when you're just feeling so good together Mm -hmm. and everything is just running smooth. It's just like, it's just like a really, it's like a well-tuned car that just purrs down the road. Okay, I have to laugh at the car analogy that he just threw out there, and we'll get back on topic here in a second, because if you guys have listened to us over the last month, um, you know that this has been one of those months where it's just been like a lot of little things have broken down. Mm-hmm. 
you know, it started off with the month right before we left Puerto Rico where our dryer, the literally day we we're supposed to leave, our dryer stops working. Well, before that, the car was the having car was issues. Having that issues that week. Uh, we came back from our trip. Tony fixed one thing on the car, didn't quite fix it. So he had to fix another thing on the car. And then this past week, our garage door opener, the motor, tiny little plastic piece inside the motor broke broke so friday night was but in spite of all of that so i just have to shout out to my husband for being mechanically inclined and (laughs) although in retrospect it would have been much more time efficient to have home depot install the motor but now you know that you can do it oh for the yeah for the cross door (laughs) opener yes very much so so just a little shout out to tony for sacrificing a bunch of time over this last month here in april to take care of lots of little things yeah um, but in spite of all of that, we've had, we've just been on a really good roll. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, so often you'll hear people say, oh, you know, I'm just waiting for something to happen. You know, I'm just waiting for the, you know, the shoe to drop. I, I, you know, I'm, you're constantly like looking over your shoulder going, oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And when we're in that, we're not in the present. You're not enjoying what's going on right now with your spouse or with your kids Mm -hmm. or just the whole family dynamic. I mean, maybe you're in a really good place and you're so busy wondering when it's going to come tumbling down or when, you know, this is going to happen or that's going to happen that you don't even recognize. Today's a really good day with the family. Today's a really great day with my spouse. Yeah. But you've missed it. Cause you're always looking for something negative. I think in our society it's, and when it comes to marriages as a whole, I mean, we're, uh, it's like what Elisa said, we're always looking for the next thing that's going to derail us. Mm-hmm. And what we want to talk about is this week is, is talking about enjoying this good time together and, and not allowing that, that idea of, wow, something is going to happen and it's going to derail us and we're going to have an argument and we're going to get a little, tense and under each other's skin, but man, let's just enjoy this time together. Mm -hmm. You know, things are running smooth. It's, it's just, it's fun. And, and the reason we bring this up is because it's been happening in our marriage over the last couple of weeks for us. I think it started at, in Puerto Rico. A good place to start. A good place to start for (laughs) us. But I mean, I think since that point in time, for us, it's just been like, man, things have just been just been running smooth, and it's not like we're we're spending hours upon hours, you know, talking to each other each day. Or it's just we're in that mode, and I, and I'm sure many of you know that feeling. Well, and I think I think a lot of it is the fact that we were given a gift in Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. um, and I'm not saying you have to go to Puerto Rico to get have this gift. We had the opportunity when we were in Puerto Rico to do a whole lot of nothing except spend time together. We didn't have the distractions. You, if you've listened to us for any period of time, you know that we did not have the distractions of our computers. Mm-hmm. We, Tony didn't have a smartphone. I had my cell phone for emergencies and for just keeping up with the friends that we had there, just trying to coordinate stuff. We didn't have our children. Right. We weren't turning. I mean, we turned on the TV a few times, but that was just kind of like, completely vegging out when somebody was taking a nap and you know, the TV would be on or somebody was taking a shower. Um, so we, we eliminated a lot of distractions and had the opportunity to just focus on one another. Right. And this can happen in your everyday life. This can happen in your home. It it doesn't, it doesn't take much to just go, I'm turning off the TV for a whole week and Mm -hmm. we're going to make sure that instead of watching TV, at night after the kids are in bed, we're going to, we're going to do something together. Right. On that note, Elise and I did get our couple's Bible, mm-hmm. our devotional Bible. And you know what? I, I thumbed through it and we're going to hopefully start today at some point is our goal, but I thumbed through it and it is really cool. So I will put a link, make sure we type that in the show notes. I will put a link to that. It looks really good, folks, and I'm hoping to really dive in it with Elisa. It probably won't be every day because we just know that if we try to do that, we'll, we'll drive ourselves nuts, but we will make it. Mm-hmm. But that's something you can start doing. You can turn things off and sort of get 
back to the basics. For those of you who've been married, hmm, Lisa and I are going on 15 years. So I'm going to say, you know, you, you 15 years or more. Um, you you remember those days when we didn't have the internet the way we have it today. <laughs> we sound so old. When I know. Say that. <laughs> I, I I know we do, but. It, it, you remember those times mm-hmm. when we didn't have our smartphones and what did we do? I mean, I can remember hanging out with Elisa on Saturday afternoons in Palm Desert when we lived in the desert, that Palm Springs area, in the middle of summer and it'd be like 115 degrees and we were poor as crap and so we really didn't like to use our AC <laughs> much. But you know what? We would we would keep our we would keep our, our apartment apartment, all the blinds and drapes drawn. So it was really dark in there. Our little cave. And our little cave because we wanted to keep it cool. But it was fun times. There weren't the distractions. Mm-hmm. We didn't feel the need to have to go so many places and do so many things. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we got to remind ourselves of that. And being able to start at that point is great. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it doesn't always have to be that way. Sometimes you just, you've, all that stuff is still going on, but you're communicating well. Your physical intimacy is going well. You're having sex. Your spiritual intimacy is going. And it's just keep that going. Keep it rolling. You know, it's like Elisa said, we're, we sometimes are looking for the thing that's going to derail us. And instead of looking what's going to derail us, let's look at ways that can continue this journey of sort of not sort of, but the, enjoy that journey of happiness in our marriage. And I want to just give an, an example real quick this morning because I'm trying to sleep in this morning. Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday I drove five hours to go up to LA and back while the family got to chill and sleep. And I wanted to sleep while I was driving. I didn't, I, I did not sleep on the way home. You didn't, but you're not driving. You don't have to stay True. as aware. So this morning we get home at about 10 by the time we get the kids to bed everybody it's 10 30 um we did feel the need to just have to go over some emails do some of that stuff 11 11 30 finally getting to bed i want to sleep until like 7 7 30 that's my goal 6 a.m elisa's alarm goes off it didn't go off i just got up okay you got up uh, whose alarm went off then that i heard it would have been alex's okay so i so elisa gets up to start her workout awesome she's doing some sort of high end high intensity training because she's like bouncing up and down in our living room. So I hear that. (laughs) Then she comes in. Okay. Then Alex's alarm goes off. Abby starts running in and out of my bedroom. (laughs) Elisa goes and takes about a 20 minute shower, which I will have to say starts to irritate me. I don't, you always think it's 20 minutes. It is not always 20 minutes. Oh, it's long. Okay, go ahead. So I'm thinking to myself, I have a couple of choices at this moment because things are going well. So I can really start getting irritated and like jump down on Lisa's back. Uh, I can say it nicely. Sorry. <laughs> you find this funny. I find it funny and, and I'll let you finish this. I find it funny because on the weekends when you're off on your nice, I'm out of the house bike ride, yeah. this is my morning. Okay, everybody's up and in my business. But go ahead. If they're happening in your business on Monday, go ahead. We're keeping everything good. <laughs> yeah. So, again, I did have that choice. And, I, and, you know, I had that feeling of, okay, I'm going to sort of lash out. I'm going to let Elisa know that, gosh, taking the 20-minute shower. And then on top of that, Abby runs in and wants to take her 10-minute shower. <gasps> we overlapped. So, you know... I could have gone down a bad road. And instead I just said, you know what? I'm gonna I'm not gonna bring it up. I did say a little something, but it wasn't so big that it was gonna just destroy where we were. Right. He just asked me if I had to shave my legs. Right. <laughs> because I know that yet tends to be, hey, it's gonna take a little it's gonna take a little longer. I did shave my legs. Yeah. And you told me that and I was like, okay, I'm glad I asked that question. Because if I didn't ask that mm-hmm. question, then I would have been fuming and irritated because you'd spent 20 minutes in the shower. Mm-hmm. So, and, and I'm just, I'm just giving you, I'm just giving you guys an example of how quickly, you know, the last three weeks of us really having a really cool time together and just really enjoying this gift of happiness and joy that we are having. Is it all again, is it always this way 24 seven? No, 
But I'm saying for the most part, you, I, I'm not feeling stress. I'm not feeling tense in my marriage. I'm not feeling like we have, we're, we're battling anything. The sex has been amazingly good. We had oral sex this week. That's right. I think that's where his contentment is coming from. We, we did have oral <laughs> sex. That was, and my mouth feels good. Perhaps it was the water bottles. Perhaps. Perhaps. So. And yeah, you know, I just want, I want to change one of the words that you're using. You keep referring to happiness and, and I think it's more a feeling of contentment. Okay. Ha- happiness. I think, you know, either you're happy or you're not happy. And, mm-hmm. and it, it's more, I think people ride more of a roller coaster when they're thinking about happiness. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say, I mean, you guys have heard us over the last three weeks. We've had issues with the kids and Abby had a little fit this morning because her girlfriend knocks on the door at seven 30 to go walk to school and she wasn't ready. And we didn't know about it because I'd left the phone in the car and didn't get the text message. But overall, you know, I'm sitting here and listening to Tony talk about this and, and I think, you know what, we've had issues in the last three weeks, but because we've been so focused on, our communication and on spending time together. Right. I know we've had the issues, but none of them stick out. Like I'm not saying going, Oh, that really, that right. really bugged me because we've spent more time in this, this place of contentment in this place where we're, you know, working together on our marriage and, and just moving things forward than in being in a place where we're battling each other. And, right. and when you're in that place where you're working on your marriage and you're, you're both playing on the same team, which is a huge thing. Cause which if only huge. one of you is working on your marriage, then you know, you're battling constantly. Um, you know, you just, you just find yourself going, okay, you know what? Yeah, I know. You know, okay. Yeah. That bugged me today. You know, like the shower thing, it bugged him, but tomorrow I can guarantee you, he won't remember the 20 minute shower today unless I take a 20 minute shower tomorrow. I mean, but, that's, but tomorrow I'm on my bike in the morning. So, oh, I, see? I won't be so it'll just be the kids you know, waking me up because <laughs> that's what happens on days when he rides his bike. But it is contentment. It is contentment. Uh, you're, you're, you're right on. And, and a lot of it, I think, has to do with in our lives, we're constantly looking towards the destination. Mm-hmm. And life isn't getting somewhere. You know, we always think, oh, when I get there, when my marriage is there, I am going to be content or I'm going to be happy. Mm-hmm. You know, our life is a journey and, and we are fortunate to be a part of this journey. We can either be present in it or not. I choose to be present in it. Mm-hmm. And by being present in it, you see those highs and those lows. What we're just saying is that when you're on those highs, Realize what's happening. Realize the goodness that's coming out of it. Realize the blessings that God is bestowing upon you and your spouse and your family. Because you need to realize that in those times, so much is happening. Mm -hmm. And in the craziness of our days, in the crazinesses of of our work lives and and our family, we miss it. We, and and I'm going to say we miss it. Elisa and I miss it. You know, the only time that I had a long duration of realizing God's presence in my life, presence in my life, was when I hiked the Pacific Crest Trail, and that is going to be eleven. I, I started eleven years ago, coming up April thirtieth. This April twenty eighth. So this coming up weekend, this week, Thursday, Thursday. So the reason I was able to to enjoy and understand that is because I was away from everything for four and a half months. We don't have that luxury now, but I did learn on that hike that the destination was me going from Canada or Mexico to Canada. That was the destination. And I always thought, man, when I get to Canada, it's just going to be so amazing. This and that it was, it was, it was an achievement. But the journey I had, those four and a half months, that journey, walking every step of the way, that is what le- has left an imprint on me. Mm-hmm. I don't talk about, you want to talk to me about my Pacific Crest Trail? I, I rarely, if ever, talk about Canada. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you about the stories in between because the stories in between are what made me who I am today. And it's just like in our marriages. We're always going, oh, 
when I when we get there, and Elisa and I will do this at times. We'll sit there and go, "Oh, when we get there, it's going to be great." And what I realized is, you know, going to Puerto Rico was, man, that wasn't on our radar at all. Mm-hmm. But what a blessing it has become. It's part of our journey as a married couple. And yes, we're still driven and we want to do stuff. But I, I, it helped me to realize that I need to be present each and every day and enjoy this journey that I'm on. Right. And, and that's, you know, that that journey versus destination plays out in so many aspects of our lives, you know, and when you're going on the journey and you have ups and downs, you take those as part of being on the journey. When you're only focused on the, on the destination, sometimes you see those, those downtimes, those fights with your spouse, those, you know, the, the extra bills that came in this month, those all seem to be, you know, things, obstacles. They're trying to throw you off the course. They're trying to, you know, things that are just out to get you. But when it's part of the journey, you know, going from point A to point B, wherever you're going, you're going to have stop signs. You know, imagine going from your house to your office. You are probably going on a freeway for some of you. So you've got life in the fast lane. Boom. Things are going good. You're just going down. You've got the stop signs. You've got, you know, the guy that pulled over in front of you that you were not expecting. Oops, slam on the brakes. You know, that happens in our daily lives. But guess what? You still get there. So you're still going to get farther on in your marriage, but you're going to have those times when you're in the fast lane and things are just zooming along. And you're going to have those times that somebody pulls over in front of you and you're just like, Rah! you know, little road rage, as we call it here in Southern California. Um, it, the important thing is how you handle that and how you view being on the journey. Mm-hmm. You know, if you and your spouse have the opportunity to sit down without those distractions and say, where do we want to go? What, what is, and it's not a bad thing to have a destination in mind because that helps you to know where your journey is going. So we are not saying don't have a destination, just be on the journey. No, have a destination, you know, it's, but it's being present. It's being present in the journey, getting to the destination, right? Not being so focused on what the end result is that you forget to live all the moments in between. Right. You know, you forget that it's kind of nice when you can have that both kids fall asleep in the car and you can just have a conversation on the way home mm-hmm. or, you know, yesterday we're with Tony's parents and brother and sister-in-law and aunt and uncle or yeah, mm-hmm. aunt and uncle and cousins. And, and you know, everybody was just really relaxed, no family drama, just enjoying each other's company. Fun things were coming up and being said, you know, everybody's little, everybody's little quirks come out and, you know, I, I'm laughing right now because I'm thinking of my mother-in-law yes. and, and I have to share this with your mom. Oh yeah. So she's, bless her heart. She scrapbooks. She does digital scrapbooking with me, creative memories. And, um, you know, being a little bit older than we are, not as a technology tech savvy, mm-hmm. um, the software has thrown her for a loop on rotating pictures, whether it's taken horizontally or vertically. And in other words, my mom does not know how to put a picture in there and rotate and rotate it or to change the photo box. Anyway, I'm working with her on it. (laughs) But the funny part of this is that when she takes pictures, she always takes two, one horizontal and one vertical. So you have to sit still for two pictures. And it was really funny yesterday because she told the kids, I just want, you know, just one picture. Like I want one picture. And so she takes the picture and the kids start to move. And she's like, no, wait, I got to take it the other way. And Alex just point blank looks at her and says, Nana, you said one picture. Yeah. <laughs> and gets up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and she is so good natured about it. And it's become one of those things that we laugh about. But, yeah. you know, it's part, of, it's part of who she is and part of what makes us special. And we all have quirks. Yeah. If you think your spouse does not have any quirks, you've been married about 15 minutes. <laughs> Because I can guarantee in the first 24 hours, they start to come out like you never saw them before. And sometimes they just start popping out after the first 24 hours. Yeah. How do you handle that? How do you talk through it? How do you make it work in your marriage? Because you said I do. And in our case, part of our vows was as long as life shall last. So we've made a commitment that as long as we are alive, we are in this marriage. So that means I have to weather 
the storms with Tony. I may not always want to. I may not always like him. But that was the commitment I made before God and everybody in attendance at our wedding. Those of you that are listening to us, you made similar commitments. I don't know exactly what your vows were. Maybe we should ask that. To just, write them? Oh, just, you know, if, if people had interesting, you know, like they wrote their vows or, you know, something, something along vows. Okay. Put that in. Well, um, I'll, make a note because it's Friday and, or Monday. And uh, yeah, I, I know. remember it's home Friday. But whatever your vows were, you made them. Your word is your bond. And so however you voiced that to your spouse, you've made a commitment to be on this journey. You've made a commitment to go through, you know, stop at the stop signs, live life in the fast lane, have people cut you off in front. You've made, you've made a decision to do this. And part of that decision is figuring out how, how to ride the happy times and live present in the moment. And when you're having those bumpy roads, how to hold on together, Mm -hmm. how to lean on each other. You know, maybe the alignment on his side of the car is better. And so you just lean over there, you know, lean into him or guys, maybe you need the arms of your wife wrapped around you today. It's okay to ask her for that. Mm -hmm. She might not know that today is a really lousy day, but she will be there for you to pick you back up and bring you back up to those good times. You know, God gave us our spouses to ride this journey. He gave us our spouses, like my dad said last week, because he knew what we were going to need before we were going to need it. You know, so when you're going down the road of good times, be present Mm -hmm. with your spouses. Don't, Don't be jumping so far into the future that you forget today and don't be looking so far in the back that you can't enjoy the moment. Because this, This is the moment that you have been given. You know, it's been said time and time again, you cannot change history. And you can't control the future. You have right now. What are you doing right now with your spouse? Right. With your marriage? No. Are you embracing it? Are you giving your marriage 100% and living and making your marriage the most it can be right now, today. Right. No, I, I agree with you. And it, it it impacts all forms of our intimacy. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think that's where you need to be looking and going, wow, this is why we're doing so well right now. You know, is it an emotional intimacy? You know, are you guys really connecting there and have noticed that emotionally you're there? For one another is it the intellectual intimacy are you having these conversations they don't need to be long but are you having these conversations that are really starting to dig deep and allow you guys to connect mm-hmm. spiritual intimacy something that elisa and i are going to be working on you know are you in a devotional are you in a study group together a marriage group together have you gone to a marriage retreat recently are you going to a marriage retreat um you know that connects you there and can really bring happiness to each other financial intimacy have you succeeded in getting out of debt together have you talked about getting out of debt together Mm -hmm. are you talking about five dollars you know because that can make a difference in a marriage just knowing that hey instead of going out for lunch today and spending five dollars i'm going to choose to make my lunch at home that's a big area, mm-hmm. you know, spirit or uh, sexual intimacy. Are you having the kind of sex you want? You know, are you, are you physical with each other? Are you physical yeah. other than sexual? You know, we, we, we break that apart because we really believe that the physical intimacy is you guys holding hands, hugging, kissing, touching. There's no sexual part of it. There's no intercourse happening. So that all of those intimacies play a part and our happiness, and our contentment in our marriage. And you can look at each one of them and go, you know what? I am content here. I am content here. We are discussing this together. We are doing this. Our sex has been heightened. Our physical intimacy 
is there. It's not just a, a slap on the ass and, hey, baby, let's go to the bedroom. It's a, it's a hug. It's a cuddle. It's a touch that makes you feel happy, makes you have joy. And the thing is, is keeping it rolling. And that's the thing. It's, it's a snowball. You know, when a snowball starts at the top of a hill, it can be pretty darn small. And for those of you who live in snowy areas, because I don't, <laughs> but I remember this from living in snowy areas, is when you push that snowball down the hill, it tends to grow and it picks up steam, you know, and it becomes bigger. And that, that is your contentment ball. You know, it's, it's growing. It's not this small little ball that you could throw at somebody. So it, it's one of those things that I think is, is missed a lot in marriage. We're always searching and, and, be it, you know, Lisa and I, we've been at this for a year and a half now and the, the one extraordinary marriage podcast, not our marriage, but <laughs> Thank you know, you for the clarification. Yeah, I see a lot of things out there that are always like, Oh, if, if you're here, you need to do this. And if your marriage is a mess here, you need to do this. And we even talk about that because it's important, but it's also important to know that when things are going good, keep that damn train rolling. Mm hmm. You know, don't don't derail it by being snide or using smart remarks or or dissing on your husband or your wife or, you know, turning your back upon them, whatever it might be. Get back to, you know, before you open your mouth and God has said the tongue is a dangerous thing. It can be good. It can be used for good and it can be used for bad. We need to remember that. Because some of those things that come out of our mouth when we're doing so darn well can derail us so fast. Mm -hmm. And I've been there and I can say it from experience. I know the stupid that comes out of my mouth at some time, at times. So be aware of what you're going to do. And instead of outbursting, and if you're in this time of where you're just digging on life in your marriage, instead of an outburst or a snide remark, Look at your intimacies. Where are you lacking it right now? Where is it where is it falling? Did the emotional just sort of take a little bit of a dive? And if so, let's let's get that back on track. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a way to get back on track and you're going, "Man, I'd love to be there, Tony and Lisa, but I can't. It's just not happening right now. We got this and this." Pick up our book. Strip down 13 keys to unlocking intimacy in your marriage. I'm telling you people are finding the goodness in there. They're finding how applying these six forms of intimacy in their marriage is having an impact on their marriage. And that's not just us saying it because it's our book. It's because whether you look at the reviews on iTunes or you see, I think we've even got a few reviews on Amazon. Yes. A couple. Yeah, we got a couple. And if you have, if you have read our book and would like to review it on Amazon, that would be sweet. We do need more there too. Um, but even the comments that have come on Facebook and comments on the post or on the blog, um, because each chapter in the book is, sta is a standalone chapter, you can look through the book and say, mm -hmm. okay, you know what? We really need help on financial intimacy. You know, the, everything else is going okay, but this is an area where how we just need a little bit more. People have, you know, th they pick the chapters and, um, if you haven't seen the book, and I because I was having a coffee with um, a new friend on Friday, and we were talking about it, and you know, telling her about the book, because she's like, "Oh, you know, how do I share this with my husband?" And I said, "You know, one of the neat things about the book, and we didn't even realize it was going to be so powerful when we started writing it. It was just easier for us to write it this way. Yeah. Is that each chapter is written in a he said, she said format. So you're going to hear from me for part of the chapter, and you're going to hear from Tony." from part of the chapter so you know we've heard of couples where you know they do it they read the book together but tony or tony the husband reads tony's part and the wife reads my part out loud out loud and so they're having the conversation and so often they find themselves in our experiences mm -hmm. you know whether you know obviously not identical but very similar types of things and so it's an easy way to share the book with your spouse because we're not um we're not phds we're not MFDs trained therapists. We, we are not overly educated in terms of psychology and psychoanalysts. We're Tony and Lisa, a married couple who is privileged enough to share our thoughts on marriage 
with all of you once a week. And mm -hmm. we do that, you know, it carries through in the book. We don't, you know, our voices are our voices and that's just, that's who we are. And, you know, find those chapters in the book that pertain to what's going on in your marriage. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones, you know, there are questions in there. There are um, verses in each chapter. And, you know, some of it's just Tony and I just, you know, sharing the funniness of, of our marriage. Yeah. And sometimes you need to see somebody else's craziness to be able to pull it back to your own marriage. Yeah. And it's not no, it's not a thick book where oh, you're going to well, we've read. We, we've, we had we've, enough terrible birthing birthing our book to make it any longer or any more complicated. <laughs> probably, uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we, we we keep it sweet and simple. You know, the kiss, the kiss um, manifesto. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, and yes, and that and that's where we come from. It, and we really believe that you can get there. We believe that in marriages we can be content, and. The big thing that we want you to take from this podcast today is that when you're there, keep it rolling, keep it going and enjoy what you got. Enjoy it because it truly is a blessing. And gosh, we just, you just don't know. You mm -hmm. just don't know. And we don't want you to miss out on those good times and then look back on life and go, man, it all flew away and. I don't remember it. Mm -hmm. There wasn't, there wasn't, the, I can't remember those times. And now I'm, I'm ailing and I don't feel good. And this and the other. You want to be in a position where, you know, you've had the bad times, but the sense of contentment you feel is so strong that the bad times are just kind of like a, well, I had to have had bad times to enjoy the good time, you know, but there's no power in those bad times the power is in your sense of contentment mm -hmm. and that's what we want for your marriage we want you to be content and growing with your spouse that's why we're here because we believe that you can have an extraordinary marriage and we believe the one community grows that through you and through you you know, sharing and talking and being a part of this community. So we thank you for being a part of us. Yep. Well, until next week, you guys, we love you. Have a fantastic week. And wherever you may be, give a little smile to your spouse, give them a kiss and love on them this week. Love you guys. Thanks for listening to the One Extraordinary Marriage Podcast. We would love to hear from you. You can go ahead and give us a call at area code 858-876-5663 or send us an email to info at oneextraordinarymarriage.com. The website is oneextraordinarymarriage.com. And while you're there, you can sign up for our Marriage Minute Monday newsletter and you can also purchase Tony and Elisa's new book, Stripped Down. It's available now in print, audio, and ebook formats. Also, the One Extraordinary Marriage Podcast has sponsorship opportunities available now. If your business is interested in sponsoring this podcast, please contact us at oneextraordinarymarriage.com.